Welcome to the Virtual College Fair for all Virginia students sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at strivescan.com slash Virginia. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, strivescan.com slash Virginia. And now I'd like to turn it over to our very first presenter from St. Vincent College. Okay, hello everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you here this evening. Uh, my name is Christina Andre and I'm one of the Associate Directors of Admission at St. Vincent College. And I am just going to pull up um, a slide here to share with you this evening. Alrighty. So hopefully everyone is seeing that. Um, if not, if someone could give me a signal, that would be great, but I hope you're seeing it. It's okay. So again, um, we are located in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, about an hour east of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And um, we do want to share some information with you this evening. And one thing I want to highlight is that we are doing in-person visits. So hopefully tonight, you know, we'll give you a quick overview of what we offer, but we encourage you to schedule that in-person visit. Um, of course, we have some adjustments in place due to the COVID situation and a lot of precautions that we're taking. So it looks a little bit different, but it is very possible to visit and we encourage that. A little bit about our college. So we are um, a smaller liberal arts and sciences college and we really put a very big emphasis on on that liberal arts so our core curriculum is quite substantial and we want everyone to have that that well-rounded education but of course um, everyone has their specialty and we do have a lot of programs from which to choose um, so for our academics we have over 50 majors available as well as a variety of minors and concentrations and certificates and all of those things. Um, our majors ran, run quite a, a, a span of options. Some of our popular programs are listed there for you. Biology is our number one uh, as far as largest major, and it is very strong at St. Vincent as are all of our sciences, um, pre-med, pre-dental, allied health, all those types of programs um, are very popular as well as very strong at St. Vincent. Our business programs, also excellent. Um, business management, business marketing are very, uh, very strong at St. Vincent. Our computing programs are great. And um, cybersecurity, we just got a national award for that um, a couple months ago, recognizing excellence in our cybersecurity program. Criminology, or we call it criminology, law, and society. Again, very strong. And education, whether you're interested in working with um, younger kids or you know, a little bit middle school or a little bit older in the high school, those are all great programs as well. And psychology. So those are just some of our most popular programs, but again, we, we have quite a few from which to choose. As I mentioned, we are a nice small school. Uh, we really put a big emphasis on attention to each individual student. We have about 1,500 undergraduates here and a couple hundred graduate students. Um, our 11 to 1 student, faculty, student to faculty ratio is one example, one statistic that kind of um, showcases that attention that students get here. And we do have about 120 full-time faculty, very accomplished faculty. Um, always, I'm always reading about amazing things they're doing in their fields and publishing and all kinds of things, but their, their number one focus is their students and their teaching. And of course, outside of the classroom is important as well. Um, sports and athletics are important to a lot of students and, and we're um, excited about all that we have to offer here. We are part of the NCAA Division III and the President's Athletic Conference. Um, we have about 25 varsity sports for men and women. And we also offer quite a few club sports and intramural sports, which can be a really nice option if you um, just aren't able for whatever reason or don't want to do the commitment of a you know, varsity sport. That can be a great option. And we have a lot of other clubs and organizations on campus. We have over 50 clubs and organizations outside of athletics. So there's a lot available. 
And of course, money is important to most of us. And I'm happy to say we offer some amazing scholarships here at St. Vincent. Um, we did recently update what the um, criteria and amounts are gonna be for fall 2021 freshmen. So if you're a high school senior, I'm happy to let you know that our main scholarship um, for incoming freshmen starts at about 14,000 and goes to about 28,500 um, per year. So, and they're not difficult to renew. And we have a variety of other scholarship opportunities as well, including our Wimmer competition, which is coming up on December 5th. Um, students have the opportunity, if they meet some minimum qualifications, to take this exam. And the top five students get huge scholarships. Um, the number one winner does get full tuition, room and board for four years. And the next four students get full tuition for four years. So that's really an exciting opportunity. And um, registration recently became available on our website. So if you're a good student, uh, Think about giving that a shot. And as far as our success rates at St. Vincent, um, we're very proud that our success rate for the class of 2019 was 98%. So the vast, vast majority are doing what they set out to do. They're working in their field, where they're in graduate school, medical school, what have you. Um, so we are very proud of that. And over the last five years, we have had 100% acceptance into law school. And for medical school, I mentioned our sciences are very strong. Our acceptance rate has been about 81%. So um, again, I want to emphasize we encourage students to visit and high school seniors, uh, we encourage you to apply for admission. You can do that on our website and we are automatically waiving our application fee if you apply by December the 1st. So um, thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay, everybody. Um, welcome. My name is Steve Milley. I'm the Richmond Regional Representative for Virginia Tech. I live and work in the Richmond, Virginia area for the um, main campus in Blacksburg, Virginia. Blacksburg is a small college town in the southwestern part of the state in the mountains uh, with about 45,000 residents, but over 30,000 of those are college students. So it is a true college town and enjoys all the benefits and advantages that that type of community brings. The university motto is ut prism, that I may serve. And it's been the core of the university pretty much since day one. Uh, we were founded as an all male, all military college. It's still a very important component of the university today. We're one of uh, the six senior military institutions. We're also one of two schools in the country that has a military population within the larger civilian population. So service is ingrained in us and it's permeated the entire student body. It's not just the military uh, students, the civilians give back in a big way, um, locally, nationally, and even internationally. So it's a very important um, characteristic of the, of the Virginia Tech student and a trend we'd like to see continue. Hokie Nation is very strong. Uh, it's like a great big family. Um, something happens when you become a Hokie and you step foot on campus, you fall in love with everything orange and maroon. Uh, you actually believe those colors go together when you become a Hokie. Uh, but what's not to love? There's so much there for you to fall in love with. Um, year in and year out, student satisfaction is ranked very high in a poll that's uh, entitled, These Students Love Their Colleges. Uh, dining facilities are normally ranked top five in the country, and that's no small feat considering the amount of people they feed every day. There are over 900 different clubs and organizations you can get involved in. There's something for everybody, honor societies, Christian organizations, fraternities, sororities, political groups, um, intramural sports is huge and very active. We also have all of the excitement of Division I athletics, whether you're a participant or a, a spectator. Um, study abroad opportunities anywhere around the world. We have one of the largest co-op programs of schools that do not mandate co-op. A lot of internship opportunities as well. So there is a lot for you to fall in love with, a lot for you to take advantage of uh, socially, but also academically. Don't let the name tech fool you. We're not just a technical school. We are a comprehensive state university, internationally known for those high-tech programs, but we have over 120 different programs within the seven different colleges. Uh, and you don't have to know what you wanna do. You can come in undecided at university studies. 
you don't have to choose a major until the end of your sophomore year. We are taking a holistic review approach uh, in the process. Uh, we are looking at the entire student. Uh, we have broken them into academic and personal factors. Academic is pretty important. Uh, the very first thing that we note when we get your uh, application is the strength of your curriculum. We want to see that you've challenged yourself. Um, and it's whatever your school considers challenging, that's what we want to see. AP, IB, honors, dual enrollment. You don't have to take everything at the most advanced level, but challenge yourself in some areas um, and do well. Um, don't, look, don't go by your GPA, don't go by our average GPA. GPAs are meaningless in the review process. Um, because every high school weights differently, every high school grades differently. For everyone entering in the fall of 2021, we are test optional. Uh, it's not going to hurt you. Test scores have always been somewhat secondary for us anyway, so please don't present a score if you don't, if you don't want to. Um, it's not going to keep you from getting scholarships. It's not going to keep you from getting financial aid. If you are a junior or younger, uh, you will have to check back with us. We are going to review that policy uh, from year to year. Personal factors are also very important. This is where you're setting yourself apart a little bit in the applicant pool. You're telling us um, everything that you're involved in, what makes you you, um, all of your clubs and organizations, your leadership positions, um, athletics, uh, but don't stop at just your school-related functions. Tell us about what you do outside of school, part-time jobs, if you're an Eagle Scout, if you're active in your church, if you have family responsibilities, don't leave anything out. Everything that you do makes you who you are. And it might explain some things on your transcript. It might explain uh, the career path that you want to take, uh, which the committee will talk about. So make sure that you, um, that you toot your own horn in this application process. You brag about yourself. Tell us everything about you. Don't leave anything out. We do have three different deadlines in the process. November 1 is an early decision binding uh, program. So you're telling us we're the only school you want to attend. Um, early actions, December 1st. The benefit to that is that you'll hear from us sooner, but you do not have to commit until, until May 1st. And then we also have regular decision with the Jan uh, January 15th deadline. One word of caution about uh, our regular decision process, it is a space available basis only. If we get to regular decision and there are no more spots in your major uh, available, then, then there's nothing that we can do. So you're gonna give yourself the most consideration possible for Virginia Tech if you at least apply by the early action deadline. The only financial aid form we require is the free application for federal student aid. FAFSA uh, uh, priority deadline is January uh, 22nd. And then the general scholarship application deadline is January 22nd. That opens you up for all scholarships that you qualify for uh, with, uh, within the university. Timeliness is the key. Don't let those pass you by. And I think my time is almost up, but the, here are uh, some other reasons why we think that you should choose Virginia Tech. Please don't uh, hesitate to reach out if you have any questions at all. You're muted, Anna. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. My name is Julie Moni. I'm the Regional Recruitment Manager of the Mid-Atlantic. Um, I'm actually based in Columbia, Maryland, um, but of course, I represent all of Virginia. Um, so, Ohio University. Um, Ohio University is the epitome of a college town. We are nestled in Southeast Ohio. Um, we are in a beautiful, beautiful rural campus. Um, when I say we're the epitome of a college town, think very small, stars hollow um, type of, of town. So the entrance right behind me, if you were actually to walk out right from there, um, to your left, you would see some sorority and fraternity houses and then the College of Business. And then you kind of, it opens up into Court Street, which is what I'm showing you right here. Court Street is the, it's, it's the cutest part. It is my favorite part of town um, and it's all walkable. 
Um, you have mom and pop shops, locally owned restaurants, but of course you have some Chipotle, um, Starbucks, CVS, you can see there's a Jimmy John's down there. Um, so very, very small town, accessible, very pedestrian friendly. There's students everywhere and that's really my favorite part of campus. Um, and just to give you kind of an idea of where we are, like I said, we are nestled right in Southeast Ohio, um, just about 30 minutes across um, the border from West Virginia. A little bit about academics. Um, so we have about 16,000 undergrads on our, uh, on our campus. We have 250 undergraduate majors. So we have a little bit of everything or a lot of bit of everything. Um, and we have colleges um, of education, engineering. Um, we have an honors tutorial college, a college of fine arts, um, communication, arts and sciences, business. Um, and if you choose to apply undecided, you would go into our university college. So we do admit by major, um, but you are more than welcome to apply undecided. Um, about a third of our students come in undecided. Um, so as you can see on the screen, we do have uh, just about a 32 average classroom. And that's how that 16,000 really becomes a lot smaller. Um, 16,000 sounds like a lot, but when you have 250 majors, <laughs> um, you know, that, that really allows for smaller class sizes. Um, and we have a 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio. It's definitely not a place where, um, you know, professors wouldn't know your name. Um, you know, if you don't show up to class, they definitely will call you out. Um, just a little bit of that um, smaller university feel in a, in a slightly larger environment. Um, and I always like to point out that 90% of our courses are taught by faculty and university administrators. Um, I like to mention that just because um, we love graduate students. Graduate students are wonderful, um, but we use them for uh, not some teach classes, but more often than not, um, we use them for, um, you know, labs, um, you know, teaching assistants, um, but not teaching the whole course. So you will be taught um, most likely by a professor with a terminal degree in his or her fields. Um, but college is a lot more than academics. Uh, we have over 600 clubs and organizations. It is ridiculously easy to get involved. You can sneeze and accidentally end up in three clubs. Um, and we have, a, we have pretty much everything you could want, uh, especially if you're interested in Harry Potter. We have nine clubs devoted to Harry Potter. Just nine, you know? Um, but if uh, <laughs> Harry Potter isn't your speed, of course, we have 16 Division I sports. Um, yes, that includes football. We did win the Potato Bowl last year, just saying. Um, but if uh, Division I is not your thing, we also have club sports as well as intramural. One of my favorite things um, is all of our home games are free for students. Absolutely 100% free. Just show your student ID. Um, another thing I really love is that in addition to sporting events, we have hundreds of speaker events, um, concerts, um, we have um, a tons of uh, student-led productions, um, gallery openings, all available for our students for free because um, you shouldn't have to pay to get involved in college. Um, I also like to point out that 93% of our students are employed or pursuing further graduation within a year of graduating. And I think that really just speaks to really who our students are. Um, they're motivated, they're intelligent, um, and they have a ton of resources um, and people supporting them throughout the, the, their journey and process. Um, and that includes course includes our career and leadership development office. You um, actually have access to them from day one throughout the rest of your life. Once a Bobcat, always a Bobcat. Um, application process is pretty simple. We are on the common application. Um, really all we really need is your transcript. Um, and if you are interested in, we have two honors programs. Um, either of those honors programs, we will need a supplemental essay. Um, and then optional items are, of course, test scores, essay, resume, letters of recommendation. Um, but I read absolutely everything, and I highly encourage you to send those um, essays, um, resumes, and letters of recommendation. Test scores are 100% optional every single program we have. Um, so if you have them and you're proud of them, send them over. If not, 
that's fine. We do review holistically. And then our application timeline, our early action deadline is November 15th. I like to stress that deadline because that is um, basically your access to all of our scholarships. Um, so all you have to do is apply by November 15th and you'll basically get a scholarship. <laughs> um, uh, that, that is our, our tuition and fees for um, this next year. And that is it for me. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. My email is Moni, my last name, at ohio.edu. Thank you very much and have a great rest of your night. Thank you. I hope my sound is back on, um, but next we will be hearing from Johnson and Wales University. Hello there. Hi, everybody. My name is Marisa Marcy, and um, I'm a regional admissions representative with Johnson & Wales University. Um, Johnson & Wales University is a beautiful nonprofit private university founded way back in 1914 up in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, Providence is a great city. In fact, they actually call Providence College Town USA because there are more college students in Providence per capita than any other US city. And we also now have a campus in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're right um, in the uptown area. In fact, uh, if you can see on the screen, literally right by Panther Stadium. So two campuses right in the heart of the cities where they're located. Charlotte's a great place to be a business student. Um, it's the second largest financial district in the country. And what really makes Johnson & Wales University unique is the fact that you will learn by doing. Uh, our classes are very hands-on. In fact, uh, our classes don't look like your typical classrooms. We don't have lecture halls with hundreds of seats. Uh, they're actually labs. Um, here, example of just some of them up in Providence, um, our finance lab, our food and innovation lab, our sports entertainment event management lab, advertising lab. Again, you're doing real world projects instead of just uh, theory. Uh, and again, some, some of the labs in Charlotte, fashion merchandising, a sustainable garden, uh, sensory analysis, because what's neat with Johnson and Wales, the class sizes are small. Um, 18 to one is the average ratio, but in your labs are actually even smaller. So your faculty, they really get to know you and they are phenomenal. They all have a lot of rich industry experience having done what they're teaching and they're amazing teachers too. Um, but they really do become your mentors. And what's especially neat at Johnson and Wales, you will start taking classes in your major as a freshman. Uh, so you're gonna get your hands in to your major right off the bat. Of course, you'll also have your core educational classes. Um, this shows you we have about 50 different majors, everything from business, hospitality, health and wellness, engineering, psychology, criminal justice, uh, but the thing that unites all of them, oh yeah, culinary arts too is really cool. What's really neat though, again, is that you will learn by doing. So your classes are very dynamic. Uh, with the culinary arts, uh, what's kind of neat, no matter what you're majoring in, you will eat well because culinary is one of our majors. Um, but it's not just the cooking of the food, it's exploring food and culture, uh, food sustainability, uh, the impact uh, of policies and government. So um, it's a very holistic approach to culinary arts. Uh, numbers tell it all right here. Almost all of our students are doing what they want to do when they graduate, whether it's launching into their careers or going on to med school, law school for their MBAs. And we actually have accelerated programs, uh, a three plus three for law school. We have a physician assistant grad program and um, accelerated MBA programs as well. And how we get that astounding career outcomes rate, um, it's the fact that you do start taking classes in your major as a freshman mean that you can do an internship as early as your sophomore year. And a lot of our students will do two internships, one sophomore year, one senior year. And we have them all over the country and also international as well. Um, more than half of our internships pay, which is quite nice. And 71% of our students who had a paid internship received a job offer from it. 
Uh, and it's not just the internships. Again, it's doing the real world projects in your labs. And as a freshman, you'll start going to career conferences. So you're going to start meeting the movers and shakers of the field you want to go into while you're still a freshman. Um, and of course, we want you to have a happy, healthy social life. So um, there's so many clubs and organizations, uh, Greek life, fraternities, sororities. Um, you'll never be bored at Johnson and Wales. And we have athletics. Um, in Providence, we're NCAA Division III. In Charlotte, we are USCAA, and this will show you the sports that we offer. We are the Wildcats, and we have beautiful dorms. We do require freshmen and sophomores to live on campus. You actually get to pick your room and your roommate, and it's everything from traditional dorms uh, to suites to apartment-style living right on campus. It's free to apply to Johnson & Wales. That's our app. We're also on the Common app. and. Uh, we are test optional. We have an early action deadline. It's non-binding, and that deadline is November 1st. Um, after that, we have rolling admissions with a deadline of March 1st. Again, we are test optional. Uh, we do award uh, uh, AP credit, depending on your score on your test. Almost uh, all of our students receive financial aid. Um, everything from merit-based scholarships to membership in a club like DECA, FBLA, FCCLA, HOSA. Uh, we uh, also do competitive awarding and we are available right now for both virtual visits and in-person visits. That's the website where you can go to schedule either in-person or virtual tours. And if you do want to get even more information, you can text WILDCATS to 75192. And my name's Marisa. I'm a rep that covers Hampton Roads, Richmond, the Eastern Shore, and Lynchburg. Um, that's my contact information. And my colleague in Virginia is Stacy Thomas. She does Northern Virginia, Charlottesburg, Harrisonburg, West Virginia, DC, and um, all that area. So we hope you will come check out Johnson & Wales and go Wildcats. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder to send in any Q&A questions, and next we'll be hearing from Moravian College. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining me tonight. Uh, my name is Tim Waite. I'm an assistant director of admission at Moravian College. Uh, we are located in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, so we, uh, one of our headline grabbers is that we were founded in 1742, which makes us uh, the sixth oldest college in America. Uh, and we actually started educating women at that time. So we were the first school in the country to educate women. Um, what I like to point out about that, uh, you know, I know it's a cool fact, but I think the thing that you can take away from that is that uh, we here at Moravian have been doing this for a long time, and that's because people have seen a need and a value in a Moravian college education. Uh, otherwise, we would have closed our doors uh, sometime in the last 280 or so years. Um, but that need has been apparent over almost three centuries, and we're still going strong. Uh, we are located, like I mentioned, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, we have two campuses, both here in town, uh, and they're less than a mile apart. Um, and we have uh, just a one hour commute down to Philly, uh, and we're only an hour and a half away from New York City as well. We're right, uh, right in Eastern Pennsylvania, uh, practically in New Jersey. Uh, so we have a great blend of both uh, the history and modern uh, on our campus. Um, the picture kind of right dead center of those older buildings, uh, that's part of our uh, south campus. I mentioned we have two campuses. Uh, that south campus is dedicated uh, to arts and music programs, uh, as well as some living spaces down there. Uh, then if you look to the picture just to the right of that, in the right top right corner, uh, that's our brand new uh, state of the art uh, health sciences building. Uh, that opened in 2019. And that's a $25 million facility. They have all sorts of uh, crazy 3D cadaver labs and simulation labs, uh, smart classrooms. So that's, so we have a nice blend of the, of the old and the new uh, on our campus. Uh, some basic statistics. 
Uh, we are kind of your typical small college atmosphere. We have uh, under 2,000 students, uh, but we still offer uh, 55 academic majors and programs. Uh, some of the more popular ones uh, on our campus uh, include those health sciences. I just mentioned that new facility. Uh, that's probably our most popular major. Uh, we also are a very large education school. Tons of teachers come out of Moravian, uh, all levels, uh, early child education, intermediate, secondary ed, um, and then every, every subject and discipline to get your certification. Uh, and then I also, uh, art and music, like I mentioned, we have a whole campus dedicated to that. So uh, those are just three of the, the more popular ones, but we do offer 55 uh, total. Uh, tons of clubs and organizations on campus, plenty of stuff for students to do. Uh, our Moravian Activities Council is always inviting. Uh, we have concerts on campus every year, uh, guest speakers, stand-up comedians, so there's always big events going on. Uh, then uh, we are a, a Division three athletic program. Uh, we have 22 varsity sports. Uh, we have, uh, we're actually introducing men's and women's swimming in the fall of 2021. Uh, and while that particular sport may not be of interest to everyone, uh, I like to mention it because it shows that we're, we're in a very fortunate position that we're actually adding programs uh, at a time where, unfortunately, a lot of schools are having to, to downsize some of their departments. We're actually in the process of adding to ours since we're, so we're, we're in a pretty good position, which is, is pretty great. Um, we are an Apple Distinguished School, uh, one of less than 30 across the country. Uh, and so what that means is uh, every one of our incoming freshmen and transfers uh, receives an Apple MacBook Pro, an iPad, and an Apple Pen. Um, you'll get this when you arrive, and it's yours to keep when you graduate. Uh, this came in very useful with everything going on with the health crisis uh, when we went virtual last year. Uh, it allowed everyone to be on the same uh, playing field and, and have the ability to, to go remote and do the, the virtual learning. Um, and everyone was able to do that very easily, which is, is nice. Um, we have all sorts of our, our career and civic engagement center can help with uh, internships and externships for our students. Uh, our um, location allows us to do have our students do internships down in Philadelphia or New York City, uh, which is great for business contacts and things like that. Um, we have large alumni bases in both of those areas. Um, we have uh, various types of uh, research opportunities uh, for undergraduates that mimic what they could experience at the graduate level, uh, which is, is great. Um, we offer study abroad programs in all sorts of different locations, Europe, Asia, um, Australia, um, and those vary in length from just a couple weeks up to a, a whole year. Uh, and a uh, great stat, uh, almost 99% of our students are employed or within graduate school uh, within that 10 months of graduating. Uh, we are on the Common App or we have our own application on our website. Uh, we require obviously a transcript and a letter of recommendation. Uh, we are test optional. Uh, except for our nursing uh, majors. Uh, anyone interested in nursing, please get in touch with me about any specifics regarding that. And then the last thing, um, we are a private school, so we do have that kind of scary private school price tag, uh, but we have academic scholarships uh, from 18 to 28,000 per year uh, to try to make sure Moravian is affordable as possible to everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Trinity Washington University. Don't forget to send in those Q&A questions.
and Jessica Seymour is she? Okay, great. You are still muted. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, you can hear me now. Perfect. Just quickly start over. So good evening, everyone. My name is Jessica Stamp, and I am Associate Director at Trinity Washington University. I'm going to use our regular presentation to share a little bit about Trinity. So I'll try to go as quickly as possible, considering the fact that um, I did take up a little bit of our time to get started. So we are an all women's liberal arts institution in Washington, D.C. We are committed to the education of women. Um, we are a liberal arts institution, like I stated. We're integrated in the liberal learning with professional preparation. So all of our students will be required to complete an internship before graduation. And we are grounded in the missions of the Sisters of Notre Dame. So we were founded under the Sisters of Notre Dame, which are nuns who were very robust during their time and felt like women should deserve the same opportunity to get an education as men could get at the time where women were not allowed to receive an education. We are located in Washington, D.C. Our first class graduated in 1904, and we're very, very close to the White House and the Smithsonian and different museums within the Washington, D.C. area, which has catered to a large group of our population being very interested in political science and anything in the political realm. So a lot of our students are interested in studying pre-law or political science or maybe even criminal justice with us. If we are considering many of our different programs of studies, the majority of our students are interested in studying sciences with us. So we do have a large population of students who are interested in studying nursing. Um, we're actually best known for our nursing program. Um, I'll share with you in a couple of minutes um, what we have to offer when it comes to scholarships for our nursing students. But a lot of our students will either do nursing or pre-med, maybe chemistry if they want to go more into the medical field. Um, but a lot of our students are more so interested in the nursing field. I'm actually an alum from Trinity Washington University, and I study business administration and communication. So if there's any students that are interested in anything in the humanities outside of the sciences, please, please, please also feel free to contact me so we can, we can chat about that. We do have campus housing. All of our students, including our transfer students, um, our first year students and transfer students will live within Coogley Hall. Um, so the idea is that you will get more of a first year student experience. We understand that the transition from high school to college is a difficult one, especially now during COVID. So we want to make sure that you are as comfortable as you possibly can. Um, our uh, student coordinators, as well as our resident coordinators, they'll do their best to ensure that you have a very productive first year where you meet new friends and uh, are acclimated with new programs that we have at Trinity. 
The Athletic and Trinity Center, we are actually best known because we were founded under the idea that we want to make sure that women have the opportunity to participate in sports and actually be as healthy as they possibly can. So within the Athletic and Trinity Center at Trinity Washington University, we have the fitness room, we have an aerobics room, we have a basketball arena, we have a walking track, and we have a swimming pool. So on top of being very concerned with our students' academic and ensuring that our students are as well versed as possible as they can within the classroom and within um, our community, we want to make sure that you're healthy individuals as well. We're NCAA certified Division Three, and we have basketball, soccer, tennis, and volleyball and softball as well. Clubs and organizations, I think that this is the, more, the most imperative part about going to college. I encourage all of our students to ensure that they can get as involved as possible. So with clubs and organizations, each of our majors have a club and organization that coincides with the interests of students that are a part of those particular majors. And you can see them listed on the screen. We also have sororities on campus, no fraternities. As I said, we are an all women's university. Um, I am a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. So if anyone has any questions about any of the sororities on campus, I'm definitely the person to ask. The application process, I would encourage everyone to take as many notes as you possibly can, not just for Trinity, but for the different universities that are presenting today. I would say that this is probably the most important part as I'm sure you all have several different questions that would cater to this. So we obviously encourage you to complete an application. We're also a part of the Common App. So if you are completing different applications within the Common App, we are also on there. Um, the official high school transcript is probably the most important part for us at Trinity. Um, we are SAT optional, so we like to see what your grade trends are and we like to see your transcript. Um, and I know with COVID that it has been difficult for people to send out different notifications via mail. So please, 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 if you are interested in Trinity, please get those out as soon as possible. When it comes to personal statements, um, once you complete the application, you'll see five different essay prompts. You can pick from one or you have the opportunity to provide a personal statement, which is pretty much sharing a personal experience that you have within your life. Um, so you can either pick from one of our five essay prompts or you can write a personal statement. We also require our students to submit at least one letter of recommendation. That can be from a coach. It could be from a teacher, a counselor. It could be from a supervisor if you're currently working. Just make sure that whomever is writing this letter for you, they know you well and they can speak highly about you. Like I said, we like to see high school trends. So for a lot of students, you may have had a difficult sophomore year, but if you know that you had a strong junior year, which we expect you to have, um, we like to see that as well. So please encourage yourself to go ahead and complete the application. We're SAT, ACT optional, not just because of COVID, but in general, we do not ask for SAT scores. There's no application fee. And for our international students, please complete one of the following two exams that will let us know that you are sufficient to complete your education or higher ed education within the United States. We are also really well known for our scholarships. So like I said, we're best known for our sciences. Um, so one of our gracious alums has actually provided one of the scholarships that we offer to our students, which is Joanna and William Conway Scholarship, which is awarded to students who are interested or genuinely interested in the nursing program. We ask you to have at least a 3.0 GPA. Once you apply, we will see that you match that criteria and we will personally invite you to apply for that particular scholarship. Within the different scholarships that we offer, the leadership um, scholarship. But that is actually the end of our time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Uh, also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted, so be sure to check out the full sign up for additional sessions at strivescan.com slash Virginia. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording, as well as all of the other sessions recordings online at strivescan.com slash Virginia. Uh, thank you all, and again, thank you to all of our presenters. Bye now.